is uh, Eric Grotebois, Five Minutes with Eric. What I want to talk about is the different ways that a business can be taxed, because this comes up a lot. Um, so let's first break it down, the type of companies. So typically, and most of the time, we're dealing with either partnerships, which could be general partnerships or limited partnerships. And, and just to be clear, a partnership is not registered anywhere. It's not registered with the state of Florida or the state of California. And it's typically bound by a contract, the partnership agreement. And it's going to be based under the old common law principles of partnership law, which is, goes back hundreds of years to old England. And, and, and that's the first type. Now, there might be scenarios where that's appropriate. A lot of times that might be a joint venture partnership between two other companies. Uh, and the reason is because most of the time what we're looking for as a business owner is what's called limited liability. And so limited liability means let's say everything goes wrong with the company. Let's just say that the, the company ends up owing somebody a ton of money. So that person ends up suing the company. What we don't want is the personal assets of the investors or of the owners to be at risk. And in a partnership, generally all of the assets of the partnership and of the partners is subject to those creditors. And so that's why they invented the corporation, which is the second form. And the corporation goes back a few hundred years. And the idea of the corporation is you could pool a bunch of investors and let's just say each person puts in a thousand bucks. If everything goes wrong, the maximum at stake is the thousand each per put in. So they're not gonna go after the person's home or their car or their family's savings account. Um, and so that the invention of the corporation was great, right? And the corporation, it's kind of an old fashioned uh, corporate form. Uh, it has a, a lot of uh, parts that are, that are kind of archaic. You must have a seal. You must have a, a written minute book. You must keep written minutes of records. You must keep a stockholder ledger. Um, you must have regular meetings, et cetera. And a lot of musts. Um, and the, the, the tricky part is if you don't follow all those rules, then one of those creditors could say, hey, judge, even though it's a corporation, they're not following the corporate rules. So I, sh I should be able to get more than just the $1,000. I should be able to go after more than that. Um, and there's good case law where, you know, we've been successful at doing that. So the third form is the LLC. Now, the corporation and the LLC, each of them, they are creatures of state law. So you'll have a California LLC or a Delaware corporation. So when we're creating the company, we're choosing the state. A lot of times people are picking Delaware, Wyoming, New Mexico, Nevada. A lot of these states afford lots of privacy protections um, and very low tax structures. So it's very attractive to a lot of investors. Florida's is pretty inexpensive and, and pretty quick. Uh, downside to Florida is everything's available online. You can find a lot of public information on the state website. And so there's a lot just that, that doesn't that stay away from, you know, maybe prying eyes we don't want them to see. So we're picking a state, we're picking either, either corporation or LLC. Now, the, a, a bit on the LLC. The LLC is a lot like the corporation, but with much more flexible rules. And so a lot of the things that you have to do for a corporation, you don't have to do for an LLC. So when somebody's, when the creditor is making that same argument, hey, judge, let me go after the owners of the LLC, the LLC is like, well, you know, judge, we didn't have to have regular meetings. We didn't have to have a minute book. We didn't have to have all of these, what we call corporate formalities. And so for that reason, 91% of new companies last year were LLCs. All right, so the purpose of this is actually how are these companies taxed, all right? Because taxes can be a big issue. So generally speaking, the LLC, let's start with that. The LLC has the most variety. So if you have a single member LLC and you just create it, then the IRS is gonna tax it as a sole proprietorship, meaning it's just disregarded and whatever profit or loss is gonna go on the owner, the individual owner's personal tax return. So that's what we call a pass-through entity. So the company uh, might even have its own bank account, which it should, but it's not gonna pay any taxes, it's not even gonna file anything. If there's more than one owner, so two or more, and the default is it'll be treated like the partnership. Partnership does file a tax return, but it doesn't pay any taxes. It's also a pass-through. And so the partnership tax return will just say, hey, it's me and Gabby, 50-50, and so 50% of the profit will go on Gabby's tax return and 50% will go on mine. And so it files this informational tax return and then you've got our personal tax returns. All right, that's the default for the LLC. Then the LLC, the third way is it can choose to be taxed as what we call an S-Corp. So when, when I ask someone, what kind of company do you have? And they say, I have an S-Corp, they're wrong. What they should say is I have a Texas corporation that's taxed as an S-Corp or a Florida LLC that's taxed as an S-Corp. So the S-Corp, similar to the partnership, it's gonna file a tax return, 
similar. It's a pass through and it's just going to tell the IRS, here's the profit or loss, here are the owners, and you can expect to find whatever's on their tax return. Interesting side note, the owners will owe the taxes regardless of if they actually take money out of the company. So the company might decide not to make any distributions, but the owners will still be taxed on the profit as if they had taken distributions. That gets tricky. Um, so just because the tax return says the owners had this much profit doesn't mean that they actually took the money and put it in their pocket. Um, then the, the LLC can also elect to be taxed as a good old fashioned corporation. Meaning an LLC can be taxed where it actually files a, a corporate tax return, it pays 21% corporate tax, and then it's up to the owners again if they distribute or not. Now here's the advantage. If they don't distribute any dividends, then they won't personally be taxed, right? Because the company already paid its own taxes. That's the C Corp. Now interestingly, the corporation real quick only has two choices. The default paying 21% corporate tax or the S Corp. You know, and as a quick note, S Corps you have to be eligible. So not every company can be an S Corp. So I know that's real quick, a lot to digest in five or so minutes, but if you guys have any questions about taxing companies, leave a comment below.